So I'm taking the image that I'm gonna model after and just making sure it's in the backdrop and using see-through. So I can use that as my template. Now what I'm doing is just setting up my primitive <coughs> so it has enough subdivisions, uh, horizontal subdivisions, so I can get the shape that I want to get. And I'll just resizing it and positioning it to fit my backdrop image. And now this whole thing is just about masking an edge, inverting that mask. You press on the gizmo, that little like home icon, and that puts the gizmo in the middle of the unmasked area. So like this, I can uh, scale it and build that shape. So again, just masking the edge, inverting the mask, Pressing that little home on Gizmo and scaling to fit <coughs> the backdrop image. Slowly building that shape. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna save that view. Uh, using the app link and then I'm gonna go into the side view and do the same thing I did in the front view I'm gonna do with the side view so I'm just again just masking and moving nothing new here Now a cool, cool uh, hotkey that you have is if you press Alt, that is gonna unlock your gizmo and you can move it around. And then when you release Alt, uh, it's locked again. So in that way, you can really quickly position the gizmo where you want it to go. So again, just press Alt and gizmo is gonna unlock when you release out, it's locked again. And there it is, saving the side view there. And I'm just unmasking everything and that's my shape. I like the way it looks, uh, but it has a lot of vertical subdivisions that I don't want uh, to have. So before I delete those, I just want to delete the top and the bottom of this cylinder. So I'm hiding just the top and the bottom. There you go, hidden, delete, hidden, and there it is. And I can very easily delete the vertical edges. So I'm using the modeler and delete entire edge loop. I'm just going around and deleting the excess edge loops. So I can get that shape much easier. And now uh, what I wanna do is just get that curvature there. I wanna have an edge loop that follows that curvature really nicely. And I'm gonna do that using uh, the nudge tool because the nudge moves uh, the vertices but it follows the curvature the shape of your sculpt. Now what I did notice here is that my uh, tool is not centered. So I wanna have my symmetry centered. So I just position on zero and now it's centered. Now I have nice perfect symmetry and I can just move on one side this edge and it's gonna be mirrored using the symmetry on the other side as well. So just nudging this edge, edge loop here to follow this curvature line perfectly. And adding, inserting one more edge loop here so I can define the bottom of the leg a little bit better.
That is perfect. Now I just want to do the same thing for the front view. And there we go. So now I have my shape. I have my curve that follows that really nicely, that edge loop. And I just want to make these into two separate polygroups. Uh, hotkey for uh, polygroup, what's visible is Control W and I use it a lot. And now that I have these two um, polygroups, I know I'm gonna have nice creasing there. And now what I wanna do is just flatten this so I get that nice flat and just using the move tool, nothing special there. I turned on double sided so I have a better view of my uh, sculpt. And just making sure that's nice and straight. So, that's looking good. Just a little tweak here and there. And now what I wanna do is crease by polygroups. Put my crease at level four subdivide and it's looking really really nice and yeah that's looking pretty cool just want to add a few more creases in the back so what I'm doing is just hiding those polygons pressing ctrl W to assign this into a new polygroup so when I go and crease by polygroups I'm gonna get a creasing in the back as well and now that shape is looking really really nice but I still have some uh, modeling to do. So I undo those subdivision levels I added and I keep on working. Now I wanna tackle the bottom. So I just kinda wanna get that nice curve that we have in our uh, image there, in our reference image. And uh, yeah, if you press Alt while using Extrude, that's gonna toggle so you can extrude all edges. A really really useful feature so once I extrude all those edges I'm conforming the shape so it looks really nice and of course I want this to be a separate polygroup as well so when I crease that's gonna be nice and sharp and now again extruding the edges and using the transpose edge option in Z modeler and now what I do here is I just uh, stretch this so it's nice and straight. It's a really cool trick that I like using when I need things to be nice and straight. So here if you push these edges far enough, it's just gonna weld everything together. And now again, I'm just gonna squeeze this so it's nice and straight. And again, uh, crease by polygroups and just checking out that shape. So one more thing that I wanna do is close that hole up as well. Make sure it's one polygroup. Stretch it into a nice straight line. Crease by polygroups. And now I have my shape, I'm very, very happy with it. Now I'm gonna keep those subdivision levels. But actually, before I do that, I also wanna make these into a separate polygroup so I get that nice creasing there that we have on the upper part of the leg. Crease by polygroups. Now I have that sharp edge. And it's looking really, really cool. So what I wanna do here is just adjust uh, the bottom part, so it's a really nice curve. Looks really nice. So, just smoothing that and making sure that curve looks nice on different subdivision levels. And uh, yeah, there we go. That is looking perfect. I want to tackle the upper part. I want this to be a little bit sharper than it is right now. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask that upper part and then I'm gonna move the bottom part there. But this is a little bit too sharp, so I'm just uh, blurring the mask there. So now I can move it and I toggle the visibility of the mask uh, off so I have a better view of how my shape looks. It's a really cool thing that I like using, hiding the visibility of the mask. And um, yeah, that is looking really, really cool. I just wanna smooth the bottom part there. Uh, it's a little bit wonky, so increasing my intensity there. And now it's nice and uh, nice and smooth. And yeah, that's my final shape. So now what I want to do is uh, create a UV map uh, so I can apply a wood texture. I use textures.com, I really like it. And I, I'm gonna use this uh, texture map. And I'll just go under texture and import our texture and there it is and it's looking really cool but uh, what I don't like is the fact that my uh, edge is on the front of my uh, leg which is really visible I don't like that front edge I want to move it in the back so I'm gonna go work on a clone because I have subdivision levels and here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the protect feature so I'm painting this with the, the protect and uh, yeah, I'm just undoing it so you can see what I'm, you know, so you can see me painting that section. So that section is now protected. And now when I unwrap, no longer, I don't have uh, the seam there. The seam is now in the back and that is just perfect. So all I have to do is just copy UV and paste it onto my sculpt. And there it is. Now the seam is in the back. It's not in the front and that is just perfect and that's that.